hatchbacks in Britain go together like tea and crumpets. But which hatchback is best for you? To help you decide, we've gathered some of our top picks ranging from the most desirable to the ones that are most ideal for new drivers. Starting with the BMW 1 Series, which comes with a choice of powerful petrol or diesel engines and looks appropriately sporty, especially when it's finished with BMW M trim and a shade of racy blue paint. And from behind the wheel, you can really tell that this is a driver's hatchback. It's got all of that BMW finesse you look for and also a nice mix of analog and digital. Take, for example, the all digital instrument cluster ahead of me here and the compact infotainment screen over there, which you can control either by using this dial down here on a rotary switch or you can use the touch screen just how we like it. And I should say the whole cabin feels quintessentially BMW and in this one we even get leather seats. Additionally you get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's a nice place in the back too with an all right amount of knee room for taller passengers, plenty of headroom and even a decent sized middle seat. As for the boot it's big with a generous amount of underfloor storage space to hide away items or enough room up top to swallow our family size suitcase. If you need more room the back bench folds down in two parts at the press of just two buttons. Next, we're on to the 1 Series' arch rival, the Mercedes A-Class, which matches elegant looks with a selection of efficient petrol, diesel or plug-in hybrid engines. Compared to that BMW, the interior of this A-Class feels a bit more glam. Just look at these funky air vents over here and also you've got some brushed aluminium to go with this chrome effect plastic, which all looks very nice. Also, it is a real tech fest up front. You've got two big screens ahead of you with some nice graphics and I really like the fact that you don't have to just use the touchscreen, but you can also use this laptop style touchpad down here. Plus, you might have noticed we haven't got any gear selector here because Mercedes locates it on the steering column up here, which clears up loads of space. And also, you can even adjust your seat in a different position to normal. The electric controls are on the door here. So it feels a little bit different, but everything is very well thought out and very nice. Although, unlike the BMW, this particular A-Class needs a wire to get its Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to work. Although, if you want it wireless, just go for the latest facelift model. In the back, passengers have plenty of knee room, plenty of headroom, and you even get a pair of hidden away USB-C ports, which makes up for a slightly more cramped middle seat. Open the boot and you'll find a generous amount of space. All right, there's not much under the floor, but the floor itself is deep enough to clear plenty of room for our suitcase. Plus, if you want more room, the rear bench can be folded down in three segments, so it's as flexible as it is roomy, sensible. Although, if sensible is your priority, our next car, the Volkswagen Golf, is hard to beat. It comes with a selection of petrol, diesel, plug-in hybrid and even electric power plants. And if you're wondering why we've chosen a Mark 7.5 rather than the latest Mark 8 model, well, let me explain. It's because of these three key reasons. Firstly, I prefer the design of this one. I think it looks a bit nicer up front especially. And secondly, obviously it's going to be a bit cheaper because it's slightly older. And thirdly, well, you don't get any of the fiddly, overly complicated controls in the cabin that you do in the Mark 8. In the Mark 7.5, you've got physical controls for the climate control, so it's much easier to use. And also the infotainment system is just so intuitive. All right, you don't have a digital instrument cluster ahead of you here, but the crisp, clear analog dials do the job just fine. In fact, that can be said for everything in this interior. It's really good. Although I have to admit there is a negative of going for the 7.5 rather than Mark 8 Golf, and that is that you don't get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. In this one, you have to plug your phone in. It's not exactly a tech fest in the back either, but it is surprisingly spacious. Knee room is good, headroom is really good, and the middle seat is usefully wide. Plus, you get a pair of vents. The boot is large as well with a floor that can be lifted to expose space for a spare wheel or left in place to retain space for our suitcase and some extra bags around it. For bigger items, the rear bench splits into two and folds down easily. All right, enough with the sensible. What about the downright fun? Because what the three-door mini hatchback lacks in space, it makes up for in coolness, with supercar aping looks and punchy petrol, diesel and electric models to boot. Now, if you've got a phobia of straight lines, well, then this Mini is the car for you because there isn't a straight line in sight. In fact, there are lots of circles instead, including a big one on the dashboard, which harks back to Mini's original design. But in this car, of course, you've got lots of digital technology, including a screen in that circle up there, which even gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly. Plus, you also get these cool retro toggle switches down here, and the whole cabin just feels fun and funky. It's very Mini, and therefore, it's a great place to spend time. Well, that's certainly true in the front, 
In the back, it's predictably cramped in this three-door model. You'll need to go for the longer five-door if you want more space, but you know what? It isn't bad at all. Headroom is surprisingly good, and with just two back seats, it's not like you'll ever have to worry about squeezing alongside someone in the middle. It's a similar story for the boot, which is predictably snug, but with a deep boot floor, there's still enough space to swallow our large suitcase, albeit upright this time. If you want extra room, the back seats fold down in two halves, ensuring the car has plenty of space for a couple. Still, if you need a tad more room, then a five-door Fiesta represents great value for money. With sporty looks inspired by the Hot ST model and eco-focused petrol, diesel and mild hybrid engines, the Fiesta has long been a favourite in Britain for good reason. The interior of this Fiesta is a great mix of sportiness and also functionality. You've got big buttons and easy to use climate control knobs. You can even use them with gloves on and the infotainment system is simple, but very intuitive. Plus you also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. Although it's not wireless, but the plug goes in just there. Climb into the back and you're greeted with good knee room, good headroom, and even a decent middle seat and a wind up window. Rest assured, you can get electric windows if you want. Pop open the boot and there's a decent amount of room available and even some hidden space where a spare wheel would go in other markets. Okay, our suitcase fits in snugly, but fold the two-part bench down and you'll unlock lots more space. And now for the Fiesta's long-standing arch rival and a firm favourite for learners, the Vauxhall Corsa. Subtler, but no less handsome, it too gets eco-focused engines in petrol and diesel forms, as well as a fully electric version. The Corsa's interior doesn't exactly feel special, but for a small car, you certainly get a lot of stuff, including an infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But you've also got some buttons to press so it makes it easy to use, including some for the climate control down there. Ahead of me, I've got an instrument cluster which is all analog, but it's so easy to read. Really, jumping behind the wheel of this Corsa is such a simple practice. Even if you're a brand new driver, you're gonna know what to do behind the wheel of one of these. As for the back seats, even with five doors, the access is pretty cramped. But once you're in, it's snug, but usable. And yep, this Corsa also has manual rear windows, but you can, of course, get electric ones as well. Open the boot and like the Fiesta, there's probably more room than you'd expect, although the amount of usable underfloor space is a little bit less in the Corsa. That said, it swallows our suitcase just as easily, and you're only two seat folds away from opening up the back fully. Practical. But if these hatchbacks aren't practical enough, check out this selection of more practical cars here. 